Welcome to the next chapter of Heart of Eternity, the book I am serializing live as I write it. You can go check this book out at coreykerr.com slash book for free. And if you sign up for the email newsletter, I'll give you a free comic. This chapter, there are two other chapters that you'll need to read. Those are in the descriptions for this one to make total sense, but you can read it without doing that. Okay, here we go. The alarm clock blared over the master bedroom's recessed speakers. Naked bodies stirred in the pile of twisted sheets, pillows, and blankets. Mr. John, Rosa the housekeeper said. Mr. John, you set an alarm. You need to get up? An unintelligible mumbling grunt came from under the pile of blankets near the headboard. House, stop the alarm, Rosa said as she carefully started navigating people and bedding. Mr. John, get up. You wanted me to get you up. Hi, going? Come back later, Louis John sleepily mumbled. Rosa ripped the comforter off the bed and tossed it into the corner, exposing a tangled mess of sheets and limbs. Mr. John, you said it was important that I get you up and that I should ignore everything that you say and get you up no matter what because you need to be at the trading of the coins with the computer, Mr. John. Wait, what day is it? It's Tuesday, Mr. John, and you said that it's important that I d didn't let you sleep in on Tuesday. She was tugging on his arm and dragging him off the bed. A young woman fell off the bed as another one stumbled towards the sliding glass doors to close the blinds. Tuesday? Ethereum and Bitcoin peak today. I need to get to my computer. Yes, Mr. John, get to your computer and I'll clean up this room, Rosa said as she nudged another sleeping Instagram model with her foot. Cook has breakfast ready. Everybody up and out. Mr. John needs to be at his computer. Up you go. Yes, yes, get your things. Rosa's chatter, encouraging everybody to clear out, faded into the background as Lewis walked down the hall towards the study. He grabbed a croissant on his way to the kitchen and said, Jeff, don't let anyone bug me. I've got some work to do. I'll be back to eat when I'm done. Lewis was a crypto day trader of sorts. He wasn't into crypto because he was trying to make Web 3.0 happen or because he believed code is law or even because he believed a financial market separated from a government control was democratizing something or another. He was into crypto because it was volatile. Unpredictable volatility is a bad thing when it comes to investments. But when you can slip into the future and see when Bitcoin hits a peak or a valley, that volatility becomes a feature, not a bug. Lewis John's brain worked differently than everyone else's. For some reason, the BB lodged in his brain as a kid gave him the ability to control when he slipped in time and retain his memories from possible futures. Maybe that was why he had this consistent low-grade headache. His memories were stacking. His brain felt full. He had jumped forward and experienced thousands of futures, remembering each one when he slipped into the present moment. He sat at his computer and logged into a couple of his crypto exchange counts. He got out his notebook and flipped to the most recent page. Two days ago, he had slipped forward, perused the news, taken some notes, and slipped back. He had built up enough in his accounts now that with two quick transactions, he made over half a million that morning. To be specific, he made $746,532 that morning, but he never really paid attention to the details. He was an idiot. Gabe knocked on the door and came in. How'd you do this morning? Great, I made some. Mind if I take a look? Gabe said, leaning over his shoulder. Have at it, brother. Lewis said as he stood up and walked to the window. Truly, all this math stuff was boring. Lewis liked the parties, houses, cars, and women. But all the math and trading stuff was just boring. He liked this little nerd. Gabe had introduced himself as Gabe Bustler, criminal accountant. And he had this nerdy little self-satisfied smile like he was getting away with something. Lewis remembered thinking that getting away with something was a good quality in a criminal accountant. Lewis knew a few things about Gabe. He loved spreadsheets, math, money, and wearing three-piece suits with tennis shoes. What he didn't know about Gabe Bustler, criminal accountant, was that his real name was Abe Cussler, FBI forensic accountant, and he was currently undercover investigating Lewis John. Lewis smiled as he watched Gabe line up three pens to the left of the keyboard. He really did like this little nerd. Gabe looked annoyed and barely moved the keyboard to the left. Lewis watched Gabe for a minute and then started towards the kitchen. Make me some money. Do you want a breakfast burrito? No, thank you. I ate breakfast six hours ago, Gabe said as he stared intently at the screen, his right hand dancing across the tin keypad. Lewis walked into the kitchen. What do you got for me, Jeff? Breakfast burritos. Always breakfast burritos. I trained in some of the best culinary schools in the world, and I only make breakfast burritos at 11 a.m. every day. And my name is not Jeff. Hey, Jeff, be cool, man. You make the best breakfast burritos. Lewis thought that he really should learn the Frenchman's name, but it was kind of funny when he started screaming in that accent of his. Some of the girls wandered out. One of them was holding her phone at arm's length, filming herself as she snuggled up to not Jeff. He was wearing one of those white chef outfits with all the buttons in the front. She wasn't wearing much at all. He put his arm around her. 
Good morning, Angie. Besties, if you don't have a personal chef, you've got to get one. I mean, Lewis and I live in that rise and grind hustle life so that we can have these kinds of luxuries. It's totally worth it, Angie said into her phone, held just at the right angle to not get flagged on social media. Her low-cut cami top matched her silk pajama pants that had hashtag blessed written across her backside. What can I make for you this morning, Angie? The Frenchman asked. Angie blurred and shook as she slipped forward several years. It was not a pretty sight. Time had not been kind to older Angie, and it looked as though she and her surgeon had lost several battles against entropy. She shrieked as she saw herself in her phone. Her face had that stretched, shiny plastic look that comes with too much surgical meddling. It had left her face paradoxically looking both gaunt and swollen. You could see the tiredness of the discarded and forgotten in her face. She was poor and alone. Chef quickly slapped hashtag blessed, snapping Angie back to her present age. Hey girl, one of the others, maybe Megan or Ashley, said, let me edit that video for you. Thanks girl. Angie handed her phone to Ashley Megan and continued. Jeff, I'm on a cave woman toxic juice cleanse diet. Can I get a mango yogurt smoothie with a laxy chaser and some sausages, please? Anything for you, Angie. Lewis wondered if the girls knew their own deformed and impoverished futures as they edited each other's videos, removing any evidence of when they slipped forward on camera. He'd lost count how many girls pretended to be in a committed relationship with him on social media. He didn't follow any of them online since they followed him around in person. Lewis, me and the girls want to go shopping. Could we... Ashley or Megan stretched out the last syllable in a plaintive question, probably intended to come off as flirty or coy or something, without actually having to say the words, please give me money. Talk to Gabe when he comes out. This was the life. Surrounded by beautiful women, an endless supply of money, all the gourmet burritos he could eat, and Gabe was handling all the boring stuff. If he could just get rid of this headache... Gabe walked around with a stack of bills and started stiffly counting out bills into each girl's outstretched hand. He flinched when one of them tried to kiss him on the cheek. Gabe, you making me money? I'm still trying to sift through and record everything. Record? Uh, no. I meant organize. Organize everything. Oh, dope. Hey, you're a smart guy. Yes, I am. Yeah. Yeah, so I wanted to run something by you. It might not make a lot of sense, but... I know the future, but it keeps changing. I want to invest in wetware, but I don't know whether to back mushroom computing or bioprocessing. Wait, go back. Gabe turned his face to Lewis as the girls walked out. What do you mean when you say you know the future? Suddenly, Lewis got a little nervous. He had never actually told anyone that he could control slipping. But he trusted Gabe. He trusted him with all of his finances, and in the two weeks that he'd known him, Gabe had never steered him wrong. Besides, Gabe was obviously way smarter. Some kind of rain man savant or whatever. He could tell him. He needed his advice in this one. Walk with me. They walked outside into the garden out of earshot of the staff. Lewis looked around and then looked at Gabe. Dude, I can see the future, sort of. Not like see it, but you know how people slip in time? Yes. But when they slip back, they forget it? Yes. I don't forget it. Oh, also I can control it. What do you mean? Control what? It, like slipping. Like, I can slip whenever I want, as far as I want. There was a beat as Gabe processed. You can do it on demand? Can you show me? Slip forward? Lewis took a deep breath and his body was blurred by horizontal fast-forward lines for a second. He was significantly older and looked around for a second, reorienting himself. I was proving that I could slip on demand, right? Yes, that's impressive. Gotcha. Sorry, this conversation was years ago. Remind me, have I talked to you about mushrooms or brains yet? No, not yet. Okay, hold on. He quickly vibrated and snapped back to his present age. He groaned as he rubbed his temples. All right, so the interesting thing is, is that I can remember all of that and every other time that I've slipped forward. I don't lose it like everybody else does when they slip back. Does it hurt? Uh, lately, yeah. It, it didn't used to hurt. Okay, listen, you're a criminal accountant, right? Agent Abe Cussler had forgotten for a moment that he was undercover. Gabe answered, yes, yes, I am. All right, between you and me, I really don't know what I'm doing. I just slip forward a few days, take a look at what a few crypto coins are doing, and then slip back. I used to try and trade stocks and foreign currency, but it was just kind of confusing. Anyway, I make enough on Bitcoin and whatnot to do whatever I want, so I just stuck with that. But I think my brain is full. I can remember thousands of futures, and it's really hard to keep everything straight. But also, it's starting to hurt a lot more, and it's getting harder to do. I don't, I don't know if I can keep it up. Could you help me figure out how much money I need to live like this without having to slip anymore? Yeah, we could calculate that. 
Criminal Gabe started thinking of all the ways they could score big with Lewis's abilities. Agent Abe started thinking through the legal ramifications of controlled slipping with retained memory. Lewis continued, All right, typically I slip a few days or weeks and buy or sell based on that. Crypto is pretty volatile, so I've been making enough to live large doing that. But as I've been planning this big score, I've been jumping years into the future and everything keeps changing pretty drastically. I guess loop hacking and other people and whatever are changing things, but there are two basic categories that the future seems to fall into mushrooms and baby brains. You're under arrest! Agent Abe Cussler was pointing his FBI-issued Glock 19 M at Lewis John. What? You have a gun? Yes. You have a gun and you're arresting me? Yes. I'm, I'm pretty sure I... Yes, I am. Gabe, can accountants arrest people? My name is Agent Abe Cussler, FBI, and you're under arrest. For what? You, you just said so many things. There's just a lot of things that you just said that are, you need to stop talking. It's just the controlled slipping and the memory of the future, no insider trading and the burritos and the baby brains. And wait, your name is Abe Cussler and you went undercover as Gabe Bussler? Yes. Put your hand behind your back. You're coming with me. I think you're something important, but I need to get back to my office and think for a minute. Agent Cussler proceeded to cuff Lewis John while he tried to think of why he was arresting him. Technically, he hadn't broken any laws. There was no law that said a person couldn't slip into the future and use the knowledge that they gained. Insider trading was more like what congressmen did, but illegal. Abe needed to get back to his office and read through some procedural manuals. He had memorized them all, but he couldn't think of any policy or procedure that covered what an agent was supposed to do if he came across someone who could manipulate time itself. He was pretty sure that someone needed to know about Lewis's abilities, but he wasn't sure who that someone was and wasn't sure what forms he needed to fill out. He hated not knowing what forms he needed to fill out. He was so flustered that he actually forgot to gather his three pens on his way out to the car. All right, so that's the chapter. If you want to read the rest of the book, you can read, watch, or listen to the rest of the book by going to coreykerr.com slash book. And I would love it if you would subscribe to that email newsletter so you can see what I'm doing. You can hit the like button, hit the bell, do the things, share this with other people. This will always be free. I might bind it and sell it, but these audio versions of it will always be free. So check that out. I think it's, I think it's worth sharing and I would appreciate it. So we will see you guys later. Go make stuff.